Now that we've seen how to apply a texture, we're going to make one from scratch. Uh, go ahead and go back to View, Rendering, and OpenGL if you haven't done that already. If you get this alert again, go ahead and hit Always Do the Selection Action and click Yes. Now, we like the way we have this texturing, so we don't want to change that too much. So in the Class Options in the Navigation Palette, choose Active Only, and then just activate the brick. Zoom in here. And you see this meadow we have in the background? We can turn that off if we want. We can go to the View menu, RenderWorks Backgrounds, and just change this to None and click OK. If we go back to Wireframe now, View, Rendering, and Wireframe, then View, Rendering, and OpenGL, that'll reset the background so it's back to nothing. Now, we have our brick, just an unmapped version of the brick. It's just a copy from the rest of the file. We're going to be using this for our test bed for our texture. In the resource browser, right-click in a blank area anywhere and choose New Resource In, and then RenderWorks Texture. We'll just call this a new texture. Now, these on the left are called shaders. Most of the time, what you'll use is either a color or an image shader. These are the most, these are the two just most common. Normally, you want to have one color. So go to the color, we'll click edit, and then we'll just pick a nice dark gray here. Click OK. You also have to know what kind of texture you're making. It'll be different depending on what you're trying to construct. So we'll actually make a new stone texture. So stone has no reflectivity, no transparency. But bump, which is just giving a physical sort of, well, giving a texture to a texture, sort of like a rough stone or hewn wood, something like that. So for this, we'll actually just choose noise. See, I have this pattern already appearing here. If we click edit, there's a different number of noise types. These are mathematically defined types of noise, but generally turbulence or wave will be what we want for a rocky effect or water. There, and that's fine, a nice unevenness to it. Now, this will just sort of give shading onto the image. It sort of applies an image over our original color that makes it look like it's bumpy. But we can actually click Edit. And if we want to, in displacement mapping, we can actually give this some actual depth to it. So. 0.01 meters. It'll give you a preview here. See, that's relatively high. So let's try 0.001. There we are. That's a little better. Set the detail of that to medium and high. There, I can see it a little clearer here now. And self-shadowing, which means it'll actually cast shadows over itself, which for a stone you would definitely want. Click OK. And this update will update as well. See this? We've made it look like there's 3D geometry here without doing anything special to it. It's just gray, and we have a noisy bump to it. We'll click OK. Select this object, and we'll just choose a new stone texture. Now again, we're in OpenGL, so we can't see the bump, and we can't see the actual mapping. So we'll go to View and Rendering. And this time, if we choose Final Quality RenderWorks, we'll get the color but we won't get that displacement mapped bump edge. We'll just get the actual image. We won't get the actual bumpiness of the object. So hit escape twice to stop the render. And we'll go to the rendering menu and choose custom render works. Hit escape real quick because we want to change the settings. Then custom render works options. We want to enable displacement mapping and set that displacement mapping to something like high. And then click OK. It'll automatically start rendering again, and we'll let that finish. Now, see here? We actually have 3D sticking out from this stone. It actually looks like rough hewn rock. Now, we don't... This was fairly easy. We just picked a color. We picked a bump shader to it. We gave it some displacement. And stone is one of the easier ones to do. It doesn't really have much reflectivity to it, if at all. And it has no transparency, of course. We don't want to get very too far into it. We're just going to cover the basics of it. So now we'll do one that's a glass, a reflective glass. We'll go ahead and we'll just edit the same texture. Right click on it in the resource browser and choose edit. Change this name to a new glass texture. Now glass is generally not this dark gray, so we'll go to color. Click edit. Just go to classic Vectorworks colors and just pick like a nice light bluish color, like a light blue or a light purple is fine. 
You don't want anything too intense like this. This is a little too vivid. So actually, we can go to standard Vectorworks colors. There's some cooler colors in there. There we are. We'll pick this lighter bluish gray here. Now, this glass we want to be smooth. So we'll turn the bump to none. We want it to be reflective. Now, you can simply just pick glass and be done with it. You can just pick glass, and that'll give it a general. And you go to transparency and pick glass for that as well. This will give you basic, perfect, clean glass. You won't have any waviness to it, no bumps to it. Uh, the reflection will be almost perfect. Now that's just the category. This is just the type of reflectivity. So this, all of these options in here have, you can click edit, and they have a different color to them. The glass shader has the edge color and the center color. So as you go from the edge of the object toward the center of it, like if you had a sphere of glass or a very thick cube, it would be whiter towards the edges and blacker towards the center. And you can adjust the blurriness as well. If you want to do frosted glass, you use something like 50%. That significantly increases render time, however. So only use blurriness when you're sure you want to use it. And it's one of those things you need to enable in the render work style as well. Keep that in mind. We'll just leave this edit glass shader the way it is and start with it. Hit OK. Transparency, we'll edit this. Transmission, this is how transparent it is. 100% is practically invisible. 10% is more like frosted or muddy glass, some old like sea glass that you would find. You can see through it, but you couldn't read through it. Refraction is whether the light actually refracts off of it. Like solid glass would generally have 1.5. We'll go ahead and make this 1.5. Color, we'll leave that alone. But you can also use this to tint the transparency. So you can tint the transparency will have a color to it. The absorption color will be if you shine more light at it, that color will become more prominent. And again, we'll go into detail on these in a 101 instead. Click OK for now. We'll let this re-render. And there we would have a completely transparent brick. But we don't have anything for it to reflect. So you see these weird anomalies here? That's because we're in a view where there's nothing else at all. So if you're ever doing glass or mirrored texture testing, you need to have other objects in the document. Otherwise, it's just going to reflect this nothingness in the background. And before we close out this video, one more type. We're going to create brick. And we're going to use the same object. We're going to apply multiple bricks to this one single brick, but that's okay. We're just doing a demo. So we'll edit our texture again. We'll rename it a new brick texture. Now, for the color, we're going to choose an image shader because we need a, an image of bricks. You can go ahead and import your own image of bricks if you wanted, but we've got something uh, pre-prepared for this example. Go ahead and just click reuse an image from another resource, which in this case would be any image fills or textures that were already created. And we're just going to choose brick wall color. See how there's brick wall bump and brick wall color? This texture, brick wall, actually has two images built into it. So for the first one, we're going to pick color since we're selecting the color. Click OK to that. You'll see our bricks come in nice there. And remember, this is still the glass one, so we have our reflectivity and transparency turned on. Let's turn those off now. Set those both to none. There's our bricks. And for bump, we want to do the same thing. We'll select image. We're going to choose reuse an image from another resource. And choose bricks wall bump. Brick wall bump. There we are. Click OK. See, this image is slightly different. This is a what's called a displacement map image. There's white and black. So the whiter areas will be higher and the black areas will be lower. We want to give this a displacement map of, let's call it point O2. Call that high. Set detail to high and click self-shadowing. We do want that. Now it's a little difficult to see here. And the more repetitions you're showing, yeah, there we go. That doesn't look right. So we'll make this object size a meter. So it's a meter long, but you can still see this sticks out much further than it should. We also want to set how large the bricks are. So we'll go ahead and click Set by Image. And then we'll choose the color. We're going to set the size by the color. Click OK. And you'll get two little selection handles here that will highlight. Grab it here. Set it at one end of one of the bricks. Grab the other one. Set it at the other end of the other end of the brick. And then just... 0.2 meters is about how long one of these brick examples will be. That's fine. Click OK. That size is a little more appropriate. And we'll go ahead and try that out now. We'll click OK. 
and we're still in OpenGL here. However, this object is a little strange because we wouldn't apply a brick texture to this sort of object. So we'll actually just click this here, and delete that brick, click the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle here, and then our second click, set the extrusion height, that's just fine. In the texture drop down menu in the render tab of the object info palette, we'll choose a new brick texture. We'll zoom in so we can see the detail of that. And we could remap the direction of these, but that's fine. We're just going to show the displacement. So we'll go ahead and go to the rendering menu, and then go ahead and render in this custom render works mode. And there's a good example of displacement mapping. There's a huge number of things you can do with creating RenderWorks textures. In the next section, we'll cover a little bit more advanced into one into two of the types of textures, backlit and glow.